All right, fellow Rust fans, good day, and as you can probably tell by the title, today's video is going to be basically based on the vehicles of Rust. Now, what are the cars of Rust, basically? Well, to me, it's a multi-headed beast, basically. What you got here isn't just a source of transportation. It works great for that. It's actually, in my opinion, a little bit better than horses in many ways. I'll kind of go over that in the first video with this three-parter here. If you haven't checked that out yet, I'd strongly suggest you go back and check it. If you can stand my voice and me rambling, if you can't, then don't. I got a little bit winded on that video, I apologize, but basically the first part, I covered all of the vehicles that are not land-based, so we're talking the boats, we're talking the submarines, the horses, well, also covered horses, those are land-based, but those are more primitive, so I figured they belong in that video a little bit more. And then the minicopter, and use that kind of as a touching point for all encompassing the mini copter and the scrap copter which is they're both the same uh gotta be a little bit crazy and suicidal to try and drive either one of them until you get the hang of it but hey it works right anyways so to me the vehicles are basically a double-edged sword it is transportation and it is also a major tool in the game now what do i mean by that well this is Mines of Moria. It's a PvE server, which means we don't kill each other, we don't raid each other. We basically stick to all of the puzzles and the NPC events, like the Bradley tank that spawns every hour or so, going after the choppers just for the hell of it, that kind of stuff, and building up really large extravagant bases that we would, wouldn't dare build on a PvP server because usually something that fancy is very easy to raid. Now, on Moria, it still does serve as the the more tool part of it as well, because in a way, your car is also a weapon. And I'll cover that in a little bit in the video here, but if you have a deer in the middle of the road, run its ass over. Seriously, I mean, if you don't have a gun with you, or you know the gun you've got isn't powerful enough and it's just gonna run away and get away, just, you know, splat. All the small game, minus the bears, will usually die in one good car strike, and then you can harvest it from there. Works great. And then on PvP servers, if you've got some asshole standing in the middle of the road shooting at you while you're driving, you're not gonna stop the car and get out and risk your life or limb. No, just floor it and flatten his ass. So yeah, they benefit greatly, and that's why I usually go to get a hold of some kind of a vehicle right off the beginning of wipe, is because it works great as transportation, it works great for Basically, farming resources and junk piles because you can get to them faster and cover more in a small time frame. And most importantly, for food gathering. Rather than trying to kill something with a spear or a rock or something, you can literally run it over. So all in all, it's a very versatile thing to start out with, especially with the introduction of the camper module, which I will cover later on in this video. I kind of was prompted to film this in the beginning in October because they had just released that and I figured okay I might as well do an expose on all the vehicles and cover the new one that everybody was so hyped about which was well versed I mean it, it's got some good points it's got some shortcomings but it was a very very prominent addition to the Rust gameplay both PvP and PvE which is saying something so I'm gonna start out here basically going over the basics what you need for all the vehicles which is obviously a frame a cockpit and an engine that's probably going to encompass part two, or this video, I should say, because there's a lot of information there. There's a lot of modifications you can do. Then I'll move on to cover the modules you can get for them, either by hunting them down on scrap, or not scrap, on uh, junked cars out in the open, or researching them and crafting them, which most of them are available to do. And then from there, I'll move on to the double modules, which take two of these slots. And then I'll cover the new camper module and the basically my daily driver with some of the hints I picked up along the way that make it why my daily driver is basically the car I build every reset. Now, we'll start out here with the basics, engines and cockpits. Now, this is what we call a cab over engine, or what I call a cab over engine. The game refers to it as a cockpit with a vehicle engine module. Now. It's got a small little 70k engine with five basic parts. You basically find one of each of these parts in those blue bins that are either with the junk piles or 
most of the time when you see those cars that have barrels standing around them that look more like cars than, well, this does. Usually there's a blue parts bin somewhere around them and you can farm some parts and some scrap from them. So very easy to get the starting parts for one of these modules, as well as it being rather efficient in fuel. Now, normally, I won't say it's more often to find these on two frames, but there's three kinds of frames here. This one's a what I call a three by, it's a three module frame. It's literally got space four, three modules. And then if you get a four module frame or a four by, as I re will refer to it in this video, you've got all four options here, which as you can imagine, that means you got more room for more modules if you so choose. Now there's also two module frames and there's actually one right outside here. Oh, sweet day time. Where there was, it might've decayed. Nope, it's right there. This is what you'd call a two frame. Now, these are the most suitable when it comes to the cab over engine module, strictly because this gives you two birds with one stone. It covers the cockpit you need and the engine you need to be allowed to let this thing off of the vehicle rack in there. And then you've got room for a single module of your choice, which in my case is usually the storage module, which was on that car in there, because it expands your inventory quite nicely. Now, is the cab over engine limited to a two frame? Actually, I mean, obviously not, because if you look at my setup here, this is a three frame and it drives just fine with a cab over. Now, what's the main difference? Usually the power ratio for this compared to the size of the frame suffers greatly when you get into a three or a four frame because it's a small engine. It's basically like trying to tow a boat with a Volkswagen Bug. Is it possible? On paper, yes. Is it actually beneficial to do? Absolutely freaking not. It's not powerful enough to tow a boat. That, that boat will end up towing you if a ni nice enough wind hits it on the back. But that's basically the thing it is. Now, the one benefit to the cab overs, like I said, is with the larger frames, it only takes one module slot. So if you have one of the big four frame or one of the big 4x frames, the one thing you have to ask yourself is how utilitarian do you want this to get? Because, I mean, obviously, like, with a 4-frame, I could put this sucker up here. I could put three trunk modules on the back here, or storage modules, I call them trunks. And that would give you, me, basically, three of these nice little additions to my inventory, which works great for res farming, for scavenging junk piles. Works great, but your speed and all-around use is going to suffer, especially if you have roads around your area that tend to be hilly or have inclines on them. So that's one thing that this cab over engine falls short of is hill climbing sucks. Now, that also is dependent on how well this is repaired. The more damage your engine module gets, the less power your vehicle has, obviously, and what quality parts you have. These are low quality, and then I've got medium quality in the trunk there, and then I've got high quality here. Now, they all are researchable on their respective tier workbenches, or I should say craftable, but as far as researching, only the medium and high quality can actually be researched via the tech tree. Medium on workbench two, high on workbench three. The low grade is not a part of the tier one tech tree because obviously you can find them anywhere on the side of the road, but you can research them the old fashioned way by going to a research table and it costs like 20 scrap a piece. I'd strongly suggest you research one of each of these. That way, at the beginning of a wipe, you can literally hop over to a tier one workbench, craft the parts you need for any vehicle that's on the side of the road, grab some fuel, throw it all in. You're good, you're rolling, you're set. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing it right now because December's wipe is supposed to include a blueprint wipe, which is why one, I figured I better finish off this video project now because I'm going to lose all of my researched modules and engine components and all that, which is going to suck, but I'll, I'll survive. But also because if people are starting afresh and they want to get into the vehicle scene a little bit more, they've got all the information they'll need in this little short series of videos. Now, going back to the quality parts, if you have a cab over engine on a larger frame and you've got all high quality parts in there, you'll do okay because a, a cab over with all high quality basically functions like a regular engine module, one of these, full of low quality parts, meaning you can actually climb hills rather significantly well, which I'll show kind of a comparison here of a high, of a high quality and low quality in a cab over going up a hill. I've got one right down the street from my base here. 
and you'll kind of see what I mean there. Now, the other major thing is fuel efficiency. The cab over it is a lot more efficient than the vehicle module. I mean, if you look at the sucker, small, fewer parts. It's kind of like, a, once again, the Volkswagen Beetle. What's the difference between a Vol with a slug bug and a pickup truck? Slug bugs can get a lot, hell of a lot farther on one gallon of fuel. And especially in the beginning when fuel's kind of limited to the number of barrels you can, red barrels you can find or the number of animals you can off and harvest for the fat for the resources. Yeah, efficiency's pretty good. Usually I end up starting with just grabbing one of these off the side of the road, get a lift, and I work with that until I get enough fuel that I feel, you know, comfortable of upgrading. So what I'm gonna start doing here first is, you've seen the cab over, I'll show you what is more considered the standard setup here. I'll get a life. Now this is what would be a standard setup. Now with a two frame, this is where the cab over engine is beneficial because with a two frame, you cut this off, move that tire there, you literally have the sports car of rust because all it is is an engine and a cockpit. Now what does that leave you with? Transportation and room for one passenger, which I mean, if you play solo, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like me who plays solo and is a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to stuff, finding anything on the side of the road or running over any animal and having to harvest it, you want to have room for a trunk. So for me, any two frame is usually a cab over engine setup. I very rarely will take out the junk jalopy here. Now, main difference between the engine compart engine modules, like the cab over engine, you only need one carburetor and one crankshaft, which is nice. But all three of the other parts, you need two of each because it's a regular sized engine, once again. We got about 25 kilowatts of max power more than what the uh, cab over is rated to do. You'll also see that with the uh, quality of parts, full 70% runs you at about 70, I mean full low grade runs you about 70% across the board when they're fully repaired or damn near. Medium runs you at about 85% and then fully, full health high quality will get you right at 100% of all three categories. Now that's also contingent strictly on the, qual the health of the parts and more importantly, the health of your engine module. If this is low health, you're not gonna get the full benefit out of those parts. You wanna make sure that this stays fully repaired basically or damn near close. Like I wouldn't let it sink below 200. That's where the lift comes in. As if you watch my intro to cars video that I'll be posting shortly. Main benefit of a lift. To repair this costs one metal fragment, one high quality where it's at right now. Basically repairing this from half health up will cost the same amount here as it would cost per hammer blow to repair it manually. The difference is it'll take more than one hammer blow to get halfway health up again. You're basically burning high quality metal, all the precious resources. Also, as long as the lift's got power, this thing will not decay. It will not age. You can leave it here for the whole wipe, and as long as it's got a continuous stream of power, it won't decay. It'll stay there the whole wipe. Barring any hiccups in the server, but that's, I digress, that's rare or out of our control. Now, once again, benefits of this motor. Well, anything with a full-size motor on it will handle hills and steep roads very well. It can handle a fair amount of off-roading without having to worry about rough terrain or anything. It just sucks a little more fuel. Now, <clears throat> I already tested the uh, cab over engine outside where basically I'm doing a run out to put it a little bit more into perspective as to how much these things burn. Now, I already did the low quality cab over with one low grade fuel in it. And I've got that marked outside. So what I'm going to do here is, give me one second. Set up, I'm going to start creating the marker for this button, which is going to be, we're going to see how far this thing can travel on one low grade in comparison. There's the starting mark. And the The low, low quality cab over is right out
I can't even freaking see it. It's way down there. I mean, it, it was pretty decent. So, without further ado, let's give that a shot. Got to dwarf this down to one fuel. And we'll see how far it travels. Now, unfortunately, it didn't get far enough to top out its speed. Well, I'll be dipped. It didn't do too terribly awful in comparison. Now, the main benefit I saw was... Oh, hold that thought. Damn, that was a tough bear. Now, the main difference was I saw it hit about 45k and then it died. Now... The low, quali the low quality cab over hit about 45 kilometers an hour as well, but it topped out at that halfway down the track, so it reached its speed. It got speed faster, slightly more efficient. Excuse me while I take care of this. Never pass up a good meal. Now if the car had been fueled, I would have showed you what I meant about hunting, because especially that pig, that would have been a one swipe down. And then obviously you take the low grade, you take the animal fat here, go to the resources tab as long as you got some cloth on you. And I'm about to have about 160 more fuel, so you know, pretty easy to maintain as long as you make sure to take advantage of every animal that's dumb enough to cross the road while you're driving. Now just for a light comparison here. Put you there. Get rid of you, I've got plenty of gas to be honest. I'm going to swap out here for the medium grade stuff. Now remember what I said earlier, this hit about, I'd say, 45 kilometers an hour. Gas. And I hear a fucking chop. Great. This is a nice thing. If you just send it towards the lift and get out, it'll center itself as long as the lift's under power. But anyway. Well, as you can see, with the medium parts, handling and responsiveness is a little bit improved. So we're going to try that test one more time here with the one can of low grade.
topped out at about just shy of 80 kilo. This is all on one can of fuel. Again, for fuel purposes, never pass up a good meal. dipped one can of fuel folks so as you can see just the upgrade from the low grade to the high grade definite definite improvement now given as that was a medium grade part I'm not even gonna bother doing a comparison with the high, with the high quality because <clears throat> I'll be driving in circles for hours. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was close to the end of that one low grade that I had in there, but it was still... I don't think you want to watch me driving around for another five minutes waiting for that damn thing to burn up. So, yeah, we'll just leave it as is now. So, then we have the final piece of resistance of the engines and the, cock and the cockpits. The armored cockpit. Now, major drawbacks? There's a couple. Benefit? It's armored. So whenever you're running a vehicle in PvP, if you decide to, I would strongly suggest having this one. Because, I mean, if you look at the cockpits that I had earlier, if you look at the window coverage, there's literally half of your body exposed at all times. So if you're playing PvP and you're driving along in one of them suckers, it doesn't matter if you got the door locked or nothing. If there's a roof sniper that wants an easy picking, you're done. Now, the benefit to the armored cockpit, which is benefit and disadvantage, is a lot less area to shoot at. I mean, if you look here, this is your windshield. I mean, you can crack open these flaps here, but for the amount of for the amount of view, visibility you gain, it is not worth the extra loss of protection in here, to be honest. But it does suck in the fact that literally your field of vision is extremely limited. It especially sucks when trying to pull back into a garage. I mean. It's heavy, it's got a heck of a lot more health to it, to be honest. I mean, it's got like 700 health, and the regular cockpit's got like three. But all around, I mean, I hate this thing. I never take it out on Moria just because it's cumbersome. And since we don't shoot at each other, I don't have to worry about it. The other downside to it is, if you'll notice with the modules here, most of the regular modules just take wooden metal fragments, like the regular cockpit here. That one takes metal in high quality, whereas the regular cockpit takes 
metal and wood. Now, this one takes metal, wood, and high quality, but that's because it's literally these two combined into one. So you've got the same materials, more or less. Just a little bit less of them. That basically covers the engines and the cockpits. The one thing I will point out is it says you need at least one of each. It doesn't specify a limit, which means literally you can take one of these cockpits, you can put that at the back of a four frame, you can fill the rest of it up with engines, or you can even take a two engine and actually swap this out with a COE as well, and basically just get a two, a two by module that's got an engine and a half in it, which both the four engine, the three engine, and the engine and a half two frame, all those are setups that I would not highly suggest unless you're close to the end of wipe and you're for lack of a better term, bored and have plenty of resources. Because they're, they're fun to mess around in. I mean, they're they're a fun little bored as shit, want to do something stupid car. But for daily drivers or for utilitarian purposes of any sort, they are not useful. And I'll show you that in a little bit here with some footage I captured last month. Building those two and taking them out for a test run. The handling is not the greatest. But yeah, that basically covers the engines and cockpit options available to you. I personally, when it comes to a three and a four frame, I usually rock the engine and a half setup because when you get the three and four frames, it's just a big enough vehicle that the handling isn't too squirrely and the power is majorly beneficial. That is one thing I will cover here is also the hill climb, which I'll cover for a quick second here. The next segment, I'm going to show you kind of what I meant about the quality of parts compared to the power output of these things. Now, you just saw how that single engine module handled the hills and the off-roading pretty well, so... We'll keep that in mind here. I'll keep the best of the parts here. I'll start with the low grade here. And then we'll move on to medium and we'll move on to high. Now since I'm using low grade, I gotta go back here and add some fuel to that. This one isn't about fuel economy, it's the endurance test basically. As you can see, watching the power gauge here, or the speed gauge, I should say. Backlight on it. Climbs it quite a bit slower to its max speed, which is usually around 60 kilo, per se. That's one of the weird jalopies I find laying around here. Now, for climbing a hill. You can see it sputtering, dropping down to 20. and practically stall out right at the top of that hill there, right? All right, perfect example right there. There's also a narrow enough hill I can actually get down without completely destroying this. Yeah, any off-roading with vehicles, you are gonna take damage just because they're, I mean, if you look at the suspension on them, they're not meant to handle off-roading. Yet at the same time, if you're like me and you like to drive right up to the resource nodes up there, what the hell, if you got one that'll get up there with, ni with the nimbleness and the Clutziness of a mountain goat, by all means. Not the 84% medium parts. We'll see the difference here. Ready? Hit its 40 kilometer speed, which is nice. Even after hitting a tree, you hit 20, but the stall was significantly less right there. Yeah, the torque and the throttle response, as you can see, is significantly better on here. Obviously, the fuel economy is better. We just covered that. Back to the hill one more time here. As you can see, we're floating right up at 40, a little bit higher than. Everything's going great. Covered that hill like it wasn't even there. So yeah, I would strongly suggest upgraded parts if you're going to be running anything that's a cab over engine alone. Like I said, normally I'd put a full engine module right in that compartment right there that's empty. Just because, you know, extra horsepower, extra kick in. Fuel economy is not the greatest, but... Eh, I was burning a little few more dinosaurs before we got to do with anything. So yeah, I'll show you why this is not the greatest of ideas unless you're extremely bored or just that nutsy. One, you basically killed the 
fuel economy or the two frame. I better top that off because it's going to suck a lot more than... Well, it might not take 39, but it'd be pretty damn close. As you can see, we are approaching 80 kilometers, which is impressive for a two frame, but this thing is getting very jumpy. It barely tapped turn and it kind of hurls itself around. Yep, pushing 100. Try to take a turn. This thing is literally like, na like a NASCAR steering system. You need to brake to take a turn, whether you like it or not, or you're gonna end up in the ditch or in the water or in a pole, like almost happened there. Yeah, extremely squirrely and tons of fun if you have an open area like the desert, but not the best thing for here. Heck, what the heck, let's go send it. I'm not terrible for for a short trip throw, and boom, there you go. There's the good old maneuverability of this rig. Yeah, that's why I strongly suggest not overcharging this thing. On a three tier, or a, a three by frame, it actually doesn't do too terribly bad. It's a little bit squirrely, but it's also pretty darn powerful. However, this setup is the best maxed out for a four tier vehicle. Hey, hunting time. And eh, never mind, he went into the water. Doggone it. So yeah, we're going to undo that before I get any more bright ideas. That basically covers all of the cockpit and engine orientation options. Oh, I almost forgot the funny car. Let's take the funny car out too, I'll show you what that's all about. So this Steffi on the server basically coined the PP car. I don't know why they call it that. Probably because it seems like a compensation vehicle. Which makes sense. I mean, who honestly needs this many engines and needs to burn that much fuel to get from one place to another? And its, it's downside is, unlike the... Mind you, a little side note here. This is the cockpit module I was referring to earlier. You could put a cab over on here to basically make a three and a half engine car, but this is already grossly overpowered to begin with, and it's only got low-grade parts in it, minus that one crankshaft, so... Yeah. We'll stick with the cockpit. But, unlike the other option I just showed you, where you have to contend basically with the squirreliness of having way too much power on a small wheelbase, this thing has got the problem of being basically a hard steer. Once you get up to speed, it does not want to turn. And it also takes a little bit longer to get up to speed because it's basically charging all those engines at once. It's also basically like trying to fly a hot dog through a meat slicer. It doesn't work out for the best of ways. Look, see, there's a random tube framer right there. As you can see, it's going up and down the hills and terrain here with no issue. It steers like a boat. It burns fuel like a boat. And there's the steering issue right there. Response timing sucks. Now I digress, any of the response timing issues I mentioned with vehicles this size could also be part due to the fact that I don't have the top of the line multi-thousand dollar graphics card for this rig. It is a 1050 Ti though, so it's still, for lack of a better term, coined old reliable. It's always fun to have it around towards the end of wipe when you get really bored because you can take it off, like say that bridge or that jump over there if you really wanted to. I don't feel like doing it just because whoever made that jump didn't complete it and just asking for disaster in something this size. I have yet to die inside a vehicle for something other than wildlife and I don't feel like today's the day where I should start. Yeah, so there's basically a waste of a four frame and three engine modules. Yeah, well I hope I didn't bore you too much in this segment of the little car series. 
hopefully. That's basically what I got for engines, engine modules, cockpit modules. I mean, you got your basic engines, you got the cab over, which is the engine cockpit combo. You've got the basic engine module, which is just an engine. Then you've got the armored cockpit, which is bogus unless you're on a PvP world, to be honest. That's just my opinion. Next, we'll tackle the fun stuff, which is actually the modules the single the single slot modules that make these things so very versatile and so much fun to use you enjoyed what you saw and you know, i haven't driven you absolutely nuts with boredom yet or my voice isn't that annoying to you please stay tuned like and subscribe if you want i mean any proceeds i make here will help a lot help me with my gaming addiction and my computer building but otherwise if you want to see all about the modules including the new camper module and whatnot please stay tuned for part three coming up probably right after this